So while I know there are probably tons of videos and articles and reviews of what I'm going to talk about today, I would like to do my own little review of Chuck Tingle's novella Straight, because let me tell you guys, there are so many layers of social commentary packed into One hundred and twenty-two pages. It is like baklava. There is so so much going on in this book, and I loved it. It was a delight to read. I love Chuck Tingle. If you're unfamiliar with him, you're missing out. <clears throat> he is a treasure, and his writing is so earnestly sincere that you just, you really can't help but love it. So, Straight is a story that, granted, is just trope after trope after trope. Like, you you can kind of guess every beat of the story. It's a very typical cabin in the woods type setup. But the universe that he creates, the dynamic of the characters, how they relate to the plot, and the overall events in the story, truly is just fucking genius, in my opinion. And I'd like to get into a couple of the themes and... Just... Um, all of my thoughts are bottlenecking. I can't get it out. <laughs> so, the plot, or the setup. We'll read the back of the book. When a strange tear in the cosmos appears with it, within Earth's annual path, the consequences are disastrous. For one night a year, the vast majority of humans now undergo a frightening mental change, transforming into hateful, rage-fueled zombies who will stop at nothing to satiate their desire for brutality. While not much is understood about this horrific mass hysteria, the demographic it affects is very specific. Cisgender straight people. A few years after the first of these tragic events, four friends from across the queer spectrum look for safety in solitude, hunkering down in a remote desert cabin for what is now known as Saturation Day. With a vaccine available for straight people to curb their violent episodes, some predict the worst is over. Others aren't so sure. As night falls, it becomes clear that survival isn't guaranteed this Saturation Day. This is the first horror novella from two-time Hugo Award finalist Chuck Tingle. So, pretty good setup. So you have... <laughs> God, you have commentary about COVID-19, anti-vaxxers. You have commentary about homophobia, transphobia, gatekeeping within the queer community as far as um, erasure of bi people and... <sighs> the attitude that trans women dating other women isn't a lesbian relationship. And allies, um, monetary issues, <clears throat> just, again, there's, <laughs> there's a lot going on in this book. And I mean, Chuck Tingle is so often dismissed as writing just off-the-wall shit. And granted, he does. And I love it. He has an unbridled imagination. The man seems to be completely unable to stop writing. And I find that deeply inspirational. And I... I would like to be able to do that myself. And whenever I 
find myself in doubt. I read one of his posts on Facebook, and I'm just like, yeah, I can be the next world's greatest author. <laughs> I haven't gotten around to it yet, but... <laughs> so let's start out with talking about the plot. Saturation Day. You have all of the straight, cis straight people go crazy, like murderous, intense violence against queer people, the queer community. And there is a there is a theme in it that I will get to in a second that isn't explicitly stated, but I think it can be easily read. So you have these four friends. Our main character slash narrator is a bisexual guy. The second friend is a gay guy. The third is a trans woman, and the fourth is her girlfriend. Now, Chuck Tingle has very strong opinions about gatekeeping in the queer community, especially as it pertains to bisexuals and trans people in uh, gay relationships, just because that seems to be up for debate for whatever reason. And one of God, the thing that I love is because all of this affects straight people, you have individuals who assume the, oh, you're bisexual, so maybe your straight half is going to make you go crazy. It doesn't. And the trans woman who is dating another woman, like, oh, well, you're just... You're male, and you're dating a female. Just, sorry. Like, well, maybe you're going to go crazy, too, because your sexual identity and your gender identity isn't valid. Well, guess what? The cosmic forces say otherwise, which is not necessarily good for their safety, but I appreciated that quite a bit. Um, then uh, allies. You have a character who comes along who is straight and was vaccinated, and so he ends up being kind of a tool for the four friends to be able to, you know, get around obstacles that they encounter, which are plentiful. But he's a fucking asshole, and he doesn't want to help them because it's too hard. I don't want to put in the legwork to help you guys. I want to look after my own ass, which can be related to how a lot of allies will be very performative about it, but they don't actually do anything helpful to the people that they claim to want to help. One of the safe havens in the book, because all of the friends come from Los Angeles, one of the safe havens is in Palm Springs. But you have to pay, I believe it was said, $45,000 to get guaranteed safety within Palm Springs. And there's only so many people who can fit in there. But a lot of the people in there are straight. They're the rich people who live in Palm Springs who are like, oh, well, you can come and get, you know, some safety tonight, but you're going to have to pay for it. Sorry if you can't. Good luck. It's really fucking annoying. <clears throat> it's, hmm. it's so well thought out. But a couple of the th background things going on, because this is the third saturation day. And I wondered 
and I kind of wish it had been explored, but at the same time leaving it kind of nebulous can be good for discussion purposes. But you have to wonder, you know, the body count of the past two saturation days. There, there's really no mention of anybody going to jail or having any kind of repercussion for their actions. And that confused me at first, but then the grim part of my psyche remembered the AIDS crisis that went totally ignored. And the trans and gay panic legal defenses that were and are still on the books, depending on where you are. So, I made that connection personally. Not sure if that was his intention, but... That's how I read it. And the vaccine situation. Got a lot of people, oh, well, the vaccine won't work, or oh, I, I don't give a fuck about other people's safety. Literally, like, if I get possessed by, you know, the cosmic void that's going to make me murder queer people, well, I don't care. I don't want to be forced to get a vaccine, just like with COVID. And then you have, there's a mention of people who literally are sleeping through it. They just, they're like, just going to chill out at home, go to bed, not think about it, it'll pass, whatever. Sleeping through it. Liter literally sleeping through it. Just showing absolutely no concern. Doesn't affect me, why, why should I go out of my way to, to help at all? So... Yeah, there's a lot going on in this book. I have a couple of... I have a criticism, but <laughs> it's more of a more of a compliment, in a way. Chuck, if you're watching this, please beef this up into a novel. There is so much you can add into this book and personally a lot of the scenes like it's just rapid fire some of the transitions between scenes are kind of hard to follow I found myself you know going down one paragraph and I'm like I have to go back and be like what, what happened let the scenes breathe I would love more from this universe, from this concept. It's just, it's, it's gold. It really is. And I mean, I just, I really, overall, I have very little bad to say about this book the story, the concept, even though it's full of horror, cabin in the woods, zombie tropes, the way that he uses it really kind of proves that, you know, if you're going to write a story, a lot of people are really concerned that they have to make something wholly original, you know, Oh, I, I don't want I don't want to use tropes. I don't want to do this, that, whatever. In my last video about the sheep and the tiger, referencing Joseph Campbell, he wrote The Hero with a Thousand Faces. He was very he studied comparative mythology. There are only so many stories 
to choose from. And yet, what matters, number one, is what you do with the story. What you do with those characters, how you flesh them out, what situation they're in, you know, what struggles they're going through, what you, what you do with all of that. And it's the storyteller that counts. Because there are no new stories. Only new storytellers. Mm -hmm. And Chuck Tingle proves that. <laughs> I mean, he is... There's no one on Earth like Chuck Tingle. And anybody who writes a story, you know, unless they're doing it via a committee... Nobody is like anybody else. Everybody's got their own experiences. Everybody's got their own ideas. Everybody just looks at everything differently. So I think any writer or aspiring writer can get a lot out of that if they think about it. I mean, you can criticize his prose all day long. You can criticize anybody's prose all day long. But, you know, just, just do it. Write. Write your story. Write a scene. Write a little exchange of dialogue, you know. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up like Chuck Tingle as the world's greatest author. <laughs> Oh, God, I love this book. So, it is available... Sorry. It is available on Amazon, and I want to say a couple other places if you want to avoid Amazon. I got a hard copy just because I like hard copies. I don't have a Kindle, and I don't want to read it off of my phone. So, plus, the cover art. I mean, look at that cover art. That is so bitchin'. Whoever did it, did a fine job. I love it. And it should be a movie. <laughs> it should be a movie. My husband emailed him and offered to turn it into a graphic novel, and I would shit myself if I could see him put his artwork toward this story. But... That's neither here nor there. <laughs> so, go read straight. It's good. It's worth your time. Think about it. <laughs>